What I want defendants to know is that I'm a really nice guy and I'm, I'm willing to help out lawyers if they have a problem, but I'm going to crush you, you know, when I have to. Yeah. And, and if I tell you that I want $50 million to settle the case, I don't want 45. Okay. And I, and I find that our system of demanding money puts us at a huge disadvantage as plaintiffs lawyers because insurers, which is whom we're usually dealing with, always want to divide it by three or at least by two. And, and, and so when, when a judge asks me for a demand now, I, I say, do you really want one? Because I'm not taking 50% of it or a third off. When I was concerned about trying this case, I brought my team in to my office when we could actually do that. And, and we all spoke without masks. And, uh, and I asked them, what do you think about this plaintiff? Because I'm very concerned about being able to get a big verdict because he walks and talks. Right. And, you know, he's not in a wheelchair. He's not using a cane. Uh, he's not drooling on himself. Um, and he, he looks better than he is, let's say, which is, I think, fair comment. Um, and so I tried the case that way. And I told the jury, look, I understand. And, and, and he was sitting when I, when I did my closing argument, he was sitting in the courtroom and I pointed to him and I said, look at how good he looks today. But let's talk about how good he's not. And this is, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. I tried a case of a double amputee. And it was a very tough liability case. I was very concerned about it. And um, when I was doing my closing argument with reference to damages, I, uh, he was sitting you know, in his wheelchair in, in, in the front of, of the, uh, right near the jury box. And I said to the jurors, you know, I said, there he is, you know, I said, and um, you see him in that wheelchair? That's the way he's going to be when when this case is over. You see that, you know, he's missing his two legs. Obviously, that's the way he's going to be when the case is over. None of that is for you. That's for real. I said, but you see the tie he's wearing? That's actually my tie. That tie's for you. Just tell him the truth. Yeah. And what I do is, and, and it comes up often where a juror, because they're very outspoken these days, will say to me, well, you know, you have to be nice to us because you're trying to get us to do what you want. <clears throat> and I say, Actually, I'm not here for you to love me, but I am here for you to respect me. Just like I'm going to respect you. I'm not going to tell you anything that I don't think is truthful. And I want you to always be true to your oath. When you figure out your theory of the case, never deviate. The theme in jury selection is the theme in opening statement, is the theme in direct, is the theme in cross-examination, is the theme in closing argument. Within reason, doesn't mean you don't add and subtract, but the theme, the overriding theme must remain the same. A jury can follow that. And, and look, jurors are sitting there and they're watching you. You're, you're, as the plaintiff's lawyer, and I tell lawyers this all the time, you're the producer, the director, the choreographer, the script writer. Think about it. It doesn't happen unless you say it happens. Yeah. You know, the case doesn't get tried unless you say it gets tried. 
Look at this great power that you have. Why would you be afraid?